Hey everyone, Mr. Voikin here. This is Unit 3, Patterns and Algebra, and we are on Lesson 3.1. In every lesson, we are going to present you with a list of terms and their definitions, a vocabulary list per se, and I will be using these words throughout the lesson, and it's going to be important that you learn uh, these terms and their definitions as well. Now on to the keys to success. This is what you need to be able to do at the end of this lesson. And we're taking a look at patterns or sequences and you will need to be able to write down a rule using words that will describe that pattern or sequence. sequence. Then you will need to be able to calculate or predict the next three numbers or the next three terms that are in that pattern. And finally, identify the name of the pattern as either an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. Now let's begin with example number one, and we're going to determine whether this is an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. So in this uh, particular pattern right here, we have five terms. So number one is term one, number three is term two, number five is term three, and etc. So let's first try to calculate if there is a common difference. To do that, we're going to take term two minus term one. So that happens to be three minus one, which equals two. So this is our common difference. So what we want to do is see if we can apply that common difference to each uh, successive term. So from term one to term two, I've got a a difference, a common or difference of plus two. Is it common? Uh, three plus two is five, that's good. Five plus two is seven, that's good. And seven plus two is nine. So we definitely have a common difference, meaning that this is an arithmetic sequence. So what about the rule? Well, it's exactly what I just wrote up above those numbers. We're going to add two to the previous term. Now to predict or calculate the uh, next three numbers, we're just gonna take the number nine and add two to that, and that's going to be 11. We will take 11 and add two to that, and we get 13. And finally, we take 13, we will add two to that, and get 15. I'd like you to move forward to example number seven. This is another arithmetic sequence. So remembering the uh, rule to discover the common difference in the last example, we are going to take term two and we're gonna subtract term one to calculate our common difference. Now term two happens to be negative 12 and now we're gonna subtract term one which is a negative 16. So we have two negative signs side by side, so that's gonna actually be negative 12 plus 16, and the common difference is going to be four. Now we want to just verify that it is a common difference. So from negative 16 to 12, it is plus four. From negative 12 to negative eight, it's plus four. And from negative eight, to negative four, it is also plus four. So what is the rule? It is going to be add four to the previous term. And what about calculating or predicting the uh, next three terms? Well, we are going to take uh, negative four, add four to that, we're gonna get zero. The next one, we're gonna take zero, add four to that and get four. And for the third one, we're going to take 4, add 4 to that, and get 8. So our next three terms are going to be 0, 4, and 8. All right, jumping over to example number 5. And when we encounter a sequence or a pattern like this, we're going to first check to see if it's an arithmetic sequence. And we do that by taking term number 2 which is two, and subtracting term one, 
and we get a common difference of 1. We want to apply that to the sequence, so 1 plus 1 is 2, that's perfect, and 2 plus 1 is 3, but term number 3 is 4, so it doesn't apply, so we do not have a common difference. So this is not an arithmetic sequence. So what's the next thing that we're going to do? We're going to check if it is a geometric sequence. And a geometric sequence will have a common ratio. So how do we determine if it has a common ratio? Well, now we take term 2 and we divide it by term 1. And that will give us a common ratio. So let's try that. Term 2 is 2. Divided by term 1 is 1. And we get a common ratio of 2. So this, or sorry, yeah, a common ratio. And what we're going to do with that common ratio is we're going to actually uh, multiply term 1 by the common ratio, and that should be term 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. So there we go. We have now determined that it is a geometric sequence. And what is the rule? We are going to multiply the previous term by 2. Okay, so let's apply that uh, to the uh, fifth term there. Uh, to determine and predict or calculate the next three. So we got 16 times 2, which is 32. Then we have 32 times 2, which is 64. And we have 64 times 2, which is 128. So the next three terms would be 32, 64, and 128. Now we're going to take a look at example number six and we could test example number six to see if it's an arithmetic sequence by taking one over 16 and subtracting one over 32 and applying it to the sequence and we discover it is not an arithmetic sequence. So we would then try to check if it is a geometric sequence by taking term two and dividing it by term one. So we're gonna to have to remember our uh, rules of uh, division with fractions, okay? So let's take term two, which is one over 16, and we're gonna divide it by term one, which is one over 32. Now remember what we do in division of fractions, we take the uh, bottom fraction right there, and we're going to flip it and then multiply the two together. So the first one stays the same. It's going to be 1 over 16. We're going to now multiply and we're going to invert that 1 over 32 and make it 32 over 1. And then we just want to multiply those straight through. Okay, so 1 times 32 is 32 and 16 times 1 is 16. And we ha now have an improper fraction. And if I divide 16 into 32, we actually get 2. So that is now our common ratio. We need to determine if that common ratio can be applied throughout the entire sequence. So 1 over 32 times 2, is it 1 over 16? Well, 1 over 32 times 2, and that's the same as 2 over 1, that's going to equal 2 over 32, and when I simplify that, that is 1 over 16. So that one worked. Let's see if it works again. 1 over 16 times 2. So 1 over 16 times 2 equals 2 over 16. Simplify that down to 1 over 8. That worked, and we'll try one more. 1 over 8 times 2 equals 2 over 8, which simplifies down to 1 over 4. So you can see again 
that multiplying this one by two, that one also works. So we do have a geometric sequence. Okay, I'm just gonna take this work right here. Minimize that a little bit, move it up to the top and fill this out. We have a geometric sequence. The rule is uh, multiply the previous term by two. And we now need to calculate uh, the next three terms. Okay, so let's start with what we have for our fifth term. It's one over two times two. That is gonna be two over two, which is one. So our next term is actually going to be one. And now it's easy to apply, we're, we're out of the fractions there. So it's gonna be easy to apply uh, or determine the next three terms or two terms. One times two is two and two times two is four. All right, that's the end of this video lesson, but you might be wondering why is example two, example three, and example four incomplete? Well, these are left for you as a challenge. These are neither arithmetic nor uh, geometric sequences. And if you want to, you can try and discover the pattern or do some uh, investigation and research on the internet and try to uh, find out what type of sequences these are. And I apologize for these two slides. They were just uh, repeats. They were not meant to be in there. Uh, so what are we doing with the last two slides? Well, example number 10, I want you to complete this on your own right now. And I will grade that for you when you submit that in the next class and example number 11 once I return the work to you we will uh, go over a question together uh, just to uh, double check and see if we have any questions or problems and then we're we're done so we'll see you in class